what's going on YouTube today we're going to talk about tactical detection so tactical detection in tactical detection we're going to explore three different aspects the definition of tactical detection the methods and tools and the definition of purple teaming also we're going to take an example from try hack me room where it explains tactical detection we're going to go over the practical scenario so before starting this let's first understand what is tactical detection by going through the definition of tactical detection so basically to simplify the definition we're going first to understand how we gather the indicators of compromise so as you know guys the IOCs or indicators of compromise are gathered either through threat hunting if you remember or incident response so IOCs can be as you know hashes can be IPs can be domains we're not going to go over these right guys so we mentioned these many times in the previous videos so IOCs can be gathered through threat hunting or incident response okay so what does tactical detection have to do with all of this so basically tactical detection takes whatever IOCs you have gathered okay through threat hunting and incident response and transform them into usable detection rules detection rules so what do we mean by saying detection rules so basically in all IDS's, IDS intrusion detection systems and SIEM solutions, you got what's called the rule sets. So in rule sets, we configure the, um, you configure rules to match certain events so that we trigger alerts. So through rules, alerts can be triggered. Without the rules, alerts cannot be triggered, either through the SIEM or through the IDS. So what we are doing here, we're going, we are enriching the data. On the seam or in the IDS by taking the IOCs whatever IOCs we gather and we transform them into usable detection rules that can be used in both the seam solutions and IDS's and whatever you have in place IPS whatever okay so through one single format we use the IOCs or the we build rules that actually encompass the IOCs we have uncovered and we actually inject or insert them into the current security solution so to achieve this there are certain tools and methods so here we jump to methods and tools so to be able to get, take the IPs hashes domains and we transform them into usable rules across all of the security solutions we're going to use something called the Sigma so Sigma actually is a vendor agonistic format so remember this word it is vendor or vendor neutral let me call it neutral vendor neutral format so how does Sigma serve us so basically Sigma allows us okay to actually build rules that can be used across all of the same solutions and IPS whether it's Splunk, Curator, Elasticsearch, Elasticstack, um, Suricata IDS you can just use them whenever you, whatever, wherever you want so that's how Sigma serves us so basically we transform IOCs into unified rules that can be used across all same solutions but you might be asking what if i don't know how to build sigma rules so if you don't know how to build sigma rules we're going to go over that in the next video where we're going to explain how to the, the syntax the various um, tags used to build sigma rules so you can use them in all uh, solutions but let's say you have built a sigma rule then how we are going to use this across all of these solutions so basically we're going to use something called the encoder wait let's use different color so encoder 
so encoder allows you guys to use sigma rule and transform it into what into different uh, rules that can be applied to different seam solutions that's what we're going to do today and now let's jump to purple teaming so so far so forth we know that we have red team red teaming and we have blue teams right so what about purple team is it a combination of both so kind of but not exactly so basically purple teaming is the process of actually testing your security defenses okay so first we test the security defenses and then we monitor what's happening in the security logs or in these seam solution logs so say you have a vulnerability like cve you try to simulate an exploitation of that cve and then you monitor the logs that stack up in your seam solution to be able to build detection rules so it's uh, that's how we can simply define it now let's jump to a practical scenario in try hack me where we will be actually transforming a couple sigma rules into uh, different or yeah different rules that can be applied to different seam solutions all right so here publicly generated iocs this is the task that we're going to tackle now now let's open encoder and answer the questions so this is encoder as you can see we insert the sigma rule and from on the left or sorry on the right we select the seam product okay uh which or where we would like to our rule to be inserted so basically the first question says upon translating the folina sigma rule the folina is a cve by the way what's the index name that the rule will be using as soon as the output so basically they built a sigma rule to detect um any attempts to exploit this vulnerability so the folina exploit the folina rule is this let's see yes what about this one we want the suspicious arguments passed to the mcdt these arguments are indicator of recent office mcdt exploitation okay so this is the one so this is the sigma rule guys an example so after we learn how to build sigma rule all right we actually transform it into the corresponding seam solution so the question is saying Upon translating the Folina Sigma rule, what's the index name that the rule will be using as shown in the output? So we translate it to, I guess, Elastic. Let's see what's the instructions here. So here, downward, select, Sigma, then to Elastic, Elastic Alert, Elast Alert. So basically, Elast Alert. And we click on Translate. As you can see, this is the index. Now basically what we are going to do guys, we, ca we can take this rule and we can insert it directly into Elastic Stack to be able to get alerts on any attempts on the CVE. So this is the rule. Now the question is saying what's the index? It is here. It is win log beat dash asterisk. What's the alerted subclass as shown in the output? So basically a subclass is part of a main class. That's the main class, alert. And this is the subclass debug so everything with two uh, with actually two columns it's a class everything without uh, everything with dash under the main class is called subclass so it's debug change the encoder output to elastic query okay elastic query it's here translate all right so which part of the elastic output looks exactly like the elastic query, elastic alert? So we saw the elastic alert a while ago. Now what part of elastic alert looks exactly like the elastic query? Let's go back to elastic alert. So that's the elastic query as you can see. It's, got, it's basically a filter to determine if there is an actual exploitation of the CVE by using the MCTT executable. Now if you go to elastic, uh, alert now this exact part exists here now it might be tempting to say it is query string but it is not it is the filter 
translate the log4j sigma rule into a Splunk alert. So basically we have a log4j here, sigma rule. Now we're going to translate it to a Splunk rule. Alert, Splunk alert. So this is Splunk alert. All right. Okay. So what's the alert severity as soon as the output? Let's go through the alert in the in the in Splunk. Basically, as you can see, there is alert dot severity equals to three. I have the description. So it is three. What's the dispatch earliest time value? So dispatch earliest time value. It's minus sixty minutes. And change the encoder output to Splunk. What's the source as shown in the output? So we we'll change to Splunk. And this is the source when log when event log. Now I don't need to explain again, guys. You know what we are doing here. We're we are not just answering the questions. We actually, as I told you, transforming the IOCs into sigma rules by writing the sigma rule and then transforming the sigma rule into a Splunk or any same solution alert or rule that you can use it directly into your solution to enhance your te tactical detection capabilities all right so that's about this task now there is another task talking about tripwires so let's explore this task so in this task if we skip directly to the questions yeah so we have these So the concept of tripwires, guys, is to be alerted on any activity taking place on your sensitive files. That's what we mean by tripwires. So let's see how we can build some tripwires. So first, let's say we have a sensitive directory or sensitive, yeah, let's call it secret. And inside secret, we have a file called um, secret recipe. So it's, uh, ah, it's supposed to be a text file. So say we have a lot of this is the file called secrets blah blah blah. Inside this file you have some sensitive text, say sensitive text. We save that. Now that doesn't matter what's the content, what matters is we understand the concept. So here Tripwire is the a way is a way to monitor any changes or attempt to access, modify, write, delete, or read the sensitive objects in your environment. So we, to do that, we're going to right click here, properties, go to advanced, auditing, add, select principal, and from here we select the users we want to monitor those users we want to see if they try to or they attempt to read write delete or access the object so for the simplicity we write everyone we check the permissions we want to monitor so we're going also to check right and as you can see we're going to check for all events whether they at uh, whether they we, whether they succeed in accessing the file or fail we're going to select all and as you can see, applies to folder and subfolders, everything inside the secret folder and, and all of the subfiles. So, okay, apply. Okay, so how to monitor? So now we're going to open the event logs. So to be able to monitor, as you can see, the 4663 is an object that's attempted to be accessed. So we're going to search for this and see if we have one. So find. Okay, as you can see, we take we as we see here um, an overview of the event and the object that was attempted to be accessed. We are not interested in that, so we're going to skip to the text file. As you can see, we have many events. I think we skipped the text file without me noticing. Let me... Ah, oh, okay. Up. 
up now coming down one more time yeah as you can see here guys this is the secret folder we created and that's how it was accessed using the Windows Explorer now the question is saying what is the accesses this is the accesses here where is it yeah the value of the accesses value in the log details when you try reading the our you try reading our secret documents contents via CMD so we're going to go back close this one open command prompt and assume that the person tries to open the document through CMD so we're going to say type secret so as you can see we access now we should be able to see this in the logs so the event log is 4663 I'm going to search for this yeah as you can see the object name highlights the object that was accessed right or highlights the object uh, which was attempted to be accessed right because sometimes it is failed sometimes it succeed so it depends and here is the process information that's the process that the user used actually to access the file read the file delete the file whatever it is and this is the value of the accesses that's the answer for your question so they tried to read data or list directory that's what we did we listed the directory and we read the data inside it what event id is always preceded by what event event id 463 which is object attempted to be accessed is always preceded by what what event id so to find the answer we're going to take a look at this document here and extract the answer it's going to be simple so here the meaning is that before a person attempts to access the object what they try to, what would they try to do you can find it through these this is the event so first 4656 and a handle to an object was requested and then the handle to an object was closed object was deleted an attempt was made to access an object that's the event that concerns the task now before that event what would precede that event before we access the object would we delete the object okay would we close the object or would we actually request the handle of course it is a handle a handle to an object was requested we request the handle and then we access the object so that's the event id that precedes 4663 what event id signifies the closure of an object it is this 4658 and event id 4658 closing an object helps determine how long a specific object was open so in addition to reporting that an object was closed it also reports how long it was open now how we can learn that we need to actually spot the description field so the question is what description field will you check in between events to be able to do so so to find the answer you're gonna have to read through all of this <laughs> but another way is to search so maybe you are interested to search by saying long to determine how long a file was open simply look for an instance of event id 4658 yeah signifying an object was closed that has the same handle id as the preceding event 454656 this one so 4656 it's an event that signifies that a handle to an object was requested okay so basically we actually query the handle to be able to find out how long it was open it signifies the period between requesting the handle and closing the handle or the closing the object so yes that was it guys these are the answers for these two tasks now regarding purple teaming questions are easy nothing is out of the ordinary so that was it guys i hope you like that and i will definitely see you in the next video